Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and today I have another dollar store DIY video for you guys. I asked over on my Instagram stories if you guys wanted to see another dollar store video this week and I had not been to the dollar store in such a long time. So I was like, I'm gonna stop in, see if I could find anything fun to DIY and that is exactly what I am doing for you guys today. I'm actually extremely excited about how these projects turned out and I actually ended up going to both the 99 cent store and the Dollar Tree uh, just because they're both pretty close to each other in Los Angeles. So I was like, I'm gonna head to both stop in and see if I could find anything fun for this DIY video and these projects turned out so incredible and honestly the price points of these items I'm gonna put the total price at the end so you guys can see how much each item actually cost in the end they are literally crazy and if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on Lone Fox and you could be part of the Lone Fox family by clicking that subscribe button and turning on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button Lastly, do not forget to follow me over on Instagram for more behind the scenes type of stuff which is Lone Fox home I'll put it right here. But let's get started with these dollar store DIYs. Jumping into our first project here, I'm using this face-shaped terracotta pot that I found at the 99 cent store. I could not believe they had this here, and this was actually $1.99, but I just couldn't pass it up. And then I also opted for some matte black spray paint. I think this would look great in any color, but I decided to go ahead and spray this with a matte black spray paint. Now, I wanna also keep in mind, guys, that if you're using this as a planter, the spray paint is a totally fine option, but something I realized after the fact is that spray paint, even when dry, can still be combustible or flammable, so keep that in mind if you're turning this into a candle i would actually opt for a black acrylic paint because it's water-based and i've had these two candles in my stash since last year i have not burned them so i was like i'm going to repurpose these and how you can repurpose old candles especially ones that you've used a lot is you're just going to fill up a pot halfway with water and let it simmer um for about 30 minutes or so you're just going to watch it and you're going to let the wax on the inside melt down all the way until it is completely translucent as you can see here i'm going to turn down the heat a little bit and just let that it. Once your face pot has fully dried, what we're going to do is actually put a wick in the inside. And I actually repurposed this from one of the candles after it was fully melted down. I just pulled the wick right out, washed it, and glued it down to the center of our face pot. So this is how it looks. And then you're going to want to carefully pour the hot wax on the inside. Now you can actually let this cool down for a little bit before it'll start solidifying again. And that's what I did. But make sure to use a hot pad or something so you do not burn yourself or use, have your parents help or something like that. So I poured this onto the inside almost all the way to the top. And you're just gonna let this dry for about an hour to two until it solidifies completely. And the total cost of the candle project was about $13 with the candles. But keep in mind guys, if you wanna use it as a planter, it would only cost you about $3. For the second project, I'm using this wire basket from the Dollar Tree, and it's just a wire hanging basket. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is actually unclipping the chain portion, and I'm gonna discard this, or I'm actually gonna keep it, but use it for a separate project. I'm just gonna need the wire basket base for this project, and I'm first gonna start by giving it a coating of white spray paint. So I did this on the front side, and then once this was actually dry, I flipped it over and did it on the inside as well, making sure everything was coated. And I'm using the macrame cord, which I'll link below. This is from Amazon, it's the one I always use on my channel. I'm going to be starting off by gluing this down to start and how I'm going to be wrapping this around the entire pot is literally just going from one little peg to the next and just wrapping it one time. I feel like this is a lot easier to see as I do it on camera as opposed to me mentioning it. So you're just going to go to the next peg, wrap it around once and you're literally going to be repeating this around the entire basket all the way until you reach the bottom. Basically we're going to want this to look a little bit more like a macrame basket as opposed to this like wire bunt cake looking situation. So we're gonna be wrapping this all the way around, all the way to the bottom. It's pretty repetitive. And I actually did this in probably about 15 foot sections. That way I wasn't using too much string and having to pull too much at a time. Once you get to the ending, just glue it off and then glue on a new piece starting on the next peg and repeat the process. Once you reach the bottom, you can just tie it off and then cut off the excess. And this is what we have so far, but I also wanted to cover the entire top ring as well, just to give it a very finished look because I didn't even like the look of the metal on the top. So I went around and wrapped the macrame cord around the entire top section until you reach the full perimeter of the basket. <laughs> 
Once done with that, you can just glue off your strands, cut off any excess, and now we are going to add the little hanging portion. And I actually opted to use the macrame cord as well for this, just because I thought it would tie in with the vibe of this a little bit more than that chain would. But you could use a chain if you wanted to. I just opted for the cording that kind of coordinated with our basket. So just fold some six foot sections in half, loop them through and pull them tight. And that will actually finish off your hanging basket. Go ahead and tie off all your strands at the top, creating a loop to hang this up. And then you can actually hang it up and you are good to go. This is a macrame planter that literally only costs us $6 to create, which is such a great price. Next up, we're gonna be creating some cute little wall frames with these metal serving trays that I found at the Dollar Tree. So what I'm starting off by doing is actually using my metal punch. Uh, this is just like an industrial hole punch to punch through on both of these frames to create two spots where I'm able to hang it up. So I measured about two and a half inches in from each edge on the actual rectangle shape. And then on the oval, I just went ahead and punched them above each of the little fleur de lis motifs that were on either edge. And once those were punched, I brought it outside and used some mat farmhouse black spray paint this is a black spray paint i used throughout the entire video and i gave it two good coatings of this spray paint but keep in mind that you can totally customize these to match your decor i think it would look super great in like a brass or even a white or even a color as well so once those were fully dry, I brought them back inside and I'm gonna use some black chain and black jump rings. These are both from Joann's Fabrics and I'm measuring out the amount of chain I want to actually hang this up with. And I swear I always see frames like this that have a chain detailing on the top of them and then like a glass insert in the middle, but they're always pretty pricey. So I wanted to create my very own version on a super affordable budget. So what I'm doing is opening the jump ring, slipping our cut chain piece through and then closing the jump ring with the pliers. And I actually opted to put two jump rings through each hole and then through each piece of chain just to make it a little bit more sturdy and I also feel like it gave it sort of like a double ring effect which just looks nice overall in the end so I added two rings to the section here and I'm repeating the process on the opposite side as well opening two jump rings slipping them through both the tray and then also the chain and then closing it and you're going to be repeating the same exact process for the oval shape as well as you can see here I actually just opted to have the oval shape hang more vertical as opposed to horizontal just because I loved the look of this closing up the jump rings there and then once you're completely done closing your jump rings and having the little hanging portion done I actually added some artwork from Jordan Clark I love these prints that she created I will link them below for you guys and that finished off these frames and the total cost per frame is about five dollars which i think is great because you can create multiple of these and really create a cool gallery wall vibe Here is our largest scale project and probably one of my favorites. I started off by using three of these garden fences from the 99 cent store. They were actually $2.49 each, but I used three of them. And I also grabbed this mirror from my stash. I already had this, but it's an eight by eight mirror from Joann's Fabrics. And what I'm gonna start off by doing is using a saw to cut off the ends of each side. So I'm cutting off one square section. This is kind of like a grid. So we're gonna need a total of a six by two grid of this like wooden material this wood fencing to go on the left and right side of the mirror as you can see this is what it's going to look like once you cut off each side and here it is laid over the top of the left and right side of the mirror now we're going to be needing to cut pieces to go on the bottom and top so what i'm doing is i'm just cutting again a two by two section of this grid and i'm cutting off one of the double sections on each side if that makes sense so there's not going to be two total uh pieces of wood on each side there's only going to be one so this is going to fit perfectly in between and you're going to repeat the same exact process for the top portion as well cutting off into a two by two grid and then next what I wanted to do was actually spray paint this I wasn't a humongous fan of the original wood color I wish it was just a little bit lighter it was almost like a reddish toned wood so what I did was I gave it a coating of white spray paint just to make this fit a little bit more in with my aesthetic of my room because I actually want to keep this it's kind of more of an art piece honestly as opposed to a usable mirror since it is pretty small but I did give it a total of two full coats of a white flat spray paint and I'm using my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks these are great for as you can see here wood plastic metal and 
and glass. So what I'm starting off by doing is adding a generous amount of hot glue onto these two long wooden sections and just sticking it and adhering it down to the left side of our square mirror. I did it on the opposite side as well. And then as you can see here, the panels just fit perfectly on the top and bottom. So you're just gonna glue those panels on the top section and they kind of just match up. And then you're also going to be gluing them on the bottom section to finish off the entire framing of this mirror. But what I wanted to also do was make this a little bit more secure by flipping it over and adding some of these miniature popsicle sticks. I just added these almost as little joint sections just to reinforce the backside. So I added this wherever we had any connections that were not made on the mirror itself. So lastly, what you're gonna do is just add a couple of strings in the backside with some hot glue. That way you're able to hang this up. I added one so it could hang vertically and also diagonally. So the total cost of this project was $13.46, which I think is great for kind of a statement mirror like this one. Okay, so those are our projects today. I hope that you guys enjoyed those. I honestly think that my favorite one was that little candle that I created. I think it is so stinking cute. But just remember to use acrylic paint just to be safe as opposed to the spray paint that I used, which I found out later on. I'm actually gonna head back and buy another one of those and make it because I actually have it right here. Honestly, like this looks like it would cost $79. Like I'm just confused how it literally costs us a couple of dollars. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy and also leave a comment below letting me know which project was your favorite and if you happen to recreate any of them definitely tag me over on instagram at lone fox home and use the hashtag lone fox family where i can find all your guys's diy projects and recreations because sometimes i repost them i put them on my stories all the time without further ado i'm actually gonna go head off to the gym right now and really work on my fitness he's my witness you know the vibes anyways thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day bye guys <laughs>